Okay, so what I want to talk about is um, doing a momentum balance in a different geometry. Um, in this uh, example, what we have is two discs separated by uh, a uniform height H, and we have a fluid that is coming uh, down a tube connected to the uh, center of, um, of the disc, and so the fluid comes down, and then in between the two discs, then the fluid starts moving outward between the disc. Um, and we're putting, uh, so this is going to be our radial direction and uh, y um, is going to, or y is uh, the thickness position up and down. And the, so uh, y is equal to zero in the very center of the channel. And then the walls are at y is equal to h over 2 and y is equal to negative h over 2. Um, we're given here, this is a steady flow, it's a Newtonian fluid, uh, you have laminar flow, so you're going to have a parabolic uh, velocity profile. Uh, the velocity vr is dependent upon y, um, and uh, to set up our momentum balance, first we need to think about our control volume for this situation. And this is what our control volume is going to look like if we just kind of take a slice of it. Um, you're going to have the pressure from the fluid that's kind of moving, moving out radial, radially. We'll push on this surface right here, which is given by um, delta Y is your thickness. And, uh, and all the way around, this is going to be 2 pi little r right here. So 2 pi little r times your thickness. Um, is going to be what this pressure at R is going to be pushing on and this pressure um, on the other side is going to be 2 pi R plus delta R times delta Y. Um, and then same kind of thing for the shear stresses. We have the shear stress acting on this upper plane as well as the lower plane. So let's take a, a closer look at how we're going to do this momentum balance for this geometry. So I just redrew the um, the control volume for us, so we can look at it as we start a momentum balance. And our momentum balance again is the sum of the forces is equal to the net rate of momentum transport. Um, so it would just be what's the momentum going in um, minus the momentum leaving the control volume. So first of all, the sum of the forces. So it's the pressure. First, we'll start with this pressure at R, pushing on this surface here, and this surface again is given by the 2 pi little r times uh, the thickness here of uh, delta Y minus 2 pi times R plus delta R times the thickness um, is, is the surface area with which that pressure is acting on. So the other uh, forces um, are the uh, shear stresses. So the shear stress up here, moving in this direction, is acting on uh, this plane right here, which is uh, given by 2 pi r delta r. So 2 pi r would be this curvature right here times delta r, the thickness. And then um, this shear stress down here, so we minus it, minus 2 pi r delta r, uh, the shear stress yr at y. So it's the same surface, just the lower um, um, plane. Um, so those are our, some of our forces. Now let's look at about the net rate of momentum transport. So the net rate of momentum in this case here, we got to think about the momentum going into the control volume and then the momentum leaving. So what's going in is um, the surface in which the momentum is going in at is again this surface right here. So it's just like in the pressure, 2 pi r delta y. And um, here is uh, rho vr, vr at r. So this is the rate of momentum that's going into this surface right here. And the rate of momentum that's leaving this surface is just like the pressure again. Two, it's the same surface, 2 pi uh, r plus delta r times delta y rho uh, vr, vr at r 
change in R, so just moving out of that surface. So that's our total momentum balance. So we can reduce our momentum balance to look like this because just pull out 2 pi delta y for the pressures and 2 pi r delta r for the shear stresses and we can pull all of this out of um, our momentum balance. Um, so we are, we are given something in this problem right here. We know that the flow rate is constant in the r direction. So if we look back at our drawing here we know that this flow rate right here is going to be constant at all these points in, in this R direction. And so that's a valuable piece of information because then, um, Q at R has to equal to 2 pi R delta Y VR um, again at R. And so that was shown if we look at again this image right here for control volume so the flow rate is going in this uh, surface area right here is the area that the flow is moving through at R. So again, it's that same surface area that the pressure is hitting on. That's why we got 2 pi R delta Y. And uh, then when it leaves up here on this other surface, it's going to be 2 pi R plus delta R uh, times a change in Y. And um, the flow rate leaving is at um, this uh, area times the velocity uh, VR at R delta R. But the flow rate is constant both at this plane and at this plane so they're equal to each other. So now we know both of these expressions are equal to each other so canceling out our 2 pi delta Y we have R VR at R is equal to R plus delta R VR at R plus delta R. Um, so there's no net momentum because um, in, our, in our net momentum equation uh, that we just found up here, we see that it reduces down to this right here where we have our R VR at R at minus uh, R plus delta R VR at R plus delta R. So these two are equal, so we have no net momentum uh, in, in this uh, geometry. So therefore, our momentum balance reduces to the sum of forces is equal to zero. So now we just rearrange our uh, sum of forces and move the shear stress to the other side. We can divide by our control volume which again is 2 pi r delta r delta y and we get this for our, our expression. We take our limits. So this is our equation for um, our governing equation for this geometry of a steady uh, laminar flow moving through those uh, two uh, disks.